Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I am going to uh, have a look at running homemade inserts and what that means exactly to see what they offer and see if they stand up. And I think uh, the idea is, is pretty solid. Uh, I'm just going to combine a couple of different pieces from some different videos that I've seen and a couple of methodologies looking at the regular uh, build of these things uh, in terms of uh, the shape of them, the function of them, what they do, how they do it. And so I'll go into a little bit more detail on that on my build channel, but this is just gonna be a pretty quick overview of what the setup is gonna be, and then I'll cut into how the ride feel is and what it looks like out in the, in the wild. So here's the basic setup. What I'm looking at basically is taking a standard pool noodle like this. You can get these in different diameters and, and uh, you can get them with solid core, you can get them with hollow core. I think the hollow core is the more uh, prevailing option out there. But essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of these, split them in almost half. I don't wanna go fully in half. I wanna basically look at doing about a 60% on one side and a 40% on the other. And the reason is that I wanna put the smaller insert in the front tire and the heavier insert in the back tire where it's gonna be doing a lot more work. I think that it's gonna be more effective that way, one. And two, the reasoning is for just cutting it is that I wanna have this slot across the top area, the top section of the tire. I want this bottom rounded edge to fit into the channel and these edges are the ones that are going to give the support to the overall side structure of the wheel as well. So what that looks like inside the tire basically is going to look a little bit something like this and again I'll go into the build details of why I've done what I've done in different areas and we can discuss that a little bit further but uh, you can see that I've got that channeled in and set in there at that 60% or so mark and the top of the tire doesn't have any support at all in terms of uh, how that's going to look and how that's going to change but what's going to change is the road ride profile where this tire tucks around here this is all fully supported in the side by the outside profile of that and that crush zone between the outside of the wheel and the rim is going to be covered as well by that so this is a fairly high density. It is closed cell. Some people have said that they're open cell, but they're closed cell noodles. They're gonna absorb because they're not quite as dense as some of the other materials or the pipe insulation. So it will absorb a little bit and have more surface area to soak up a little bit of your sealant. But I think it's gonna be a pretty decent run. When I started this build, I spec these out to an entirely different set of tires, but because it's spring here in Ontario and it's pretty darn muddy for a while still, I'm going to use these in these in the Magic Marys, which are a much heavier. I think it's going to give me the same sort of benefits even in this slight profile change. So I'm going to a 2.4 from a 2.35, which is not a big change, but factoring in the, the extra casing, there is a little bit more going on here. So that should still give me a really good cushioning profile, I think, and stiffen up the sidewalls even a little bit on these tires. Let's get these things on the wheels and try it out, see what things are like. Three weeks later. While I was out here, I did want to give you guys an update on the Kush Core idea that I've been messing around with a little bit. I am out here right now just doing a quick video on trail tips and it occurs to me as I'm riding here that I've forgotten just how much these fake Kush Cores have helped. I'm probably running about 14, 15 pounds in my back tire right now. I don't typically run that soft. I'm normally in the 20, 21 pound range. And even though I'm riding over a lot of really sharp, jagged stuff, and I've got the other camera here, I'll give you a shot at just how soft these tires are. You can see that coming up on this, I'm able to get quite a bit of sink in there. But you'll notice as well that I'm not pinging that rim. Uh, because that that diaphragm or that foam in there is taking the bulk of that hit so it's been really interesting and usually running around 20 21 pounds i might actually bring that once in a while but in this case it's it hasn't happened once in my entire ride nor any of my previous rides i've been out uh, maybe 10 times since i put those in and i haven't found anything but being impressed with those things they are clearly taking a real beating and they're really doing the job that that I was asking them to do. I am very, very impressed with my $2 investment. This is really something. I'm gonna switch my lighter casing tires, the cross countries, and give them a good spin on that. I think I've probably got about 200 kilometers on these tires with the fake Kush cores in them at this point, and I am nothing but impressed. I can't wait to try them on the lighter casing tires.
So it's interesting to look at the fact that with this empty tire, you can see I can put a fair bit of pressure on it and I'm, I am leaning into that quite hard and it's not bottoming out on that thing at all. I'm still maintaining that cushioning in between the, the, the wheel and the, and the tire. This is completely empty, which obviously is gonna be an issue if I don't have anything in there at all. So it definitely does what I expect it to do, what I want it to do. And while it may not protect as well as a real Kush Core, it's definitely performing the task here. It's definitely allowing me to decrease my pressures into the five pound range, even from a really low pressure to start with. So it is absolutely protecting that tire and achieving what I want, which is a kind of a low level performance increase for, for low dollars. And it's entirely, in my opinion, worth it. Now this was with the really large lug tires and I'll try it next on the cross country tires, the lighter weight casing and see how it performs with that as well. So we'll have a closer look at the inside of the tire now that I've opened up and you can see there's actually no damage at all whatsoever to that foam. It's still 100% and you can tell that you definitely need to use a lot more sealant when you do it this way because a lot, a lot is lost to the surface area of the foam but it still doesn't seem to soak it up as much as it is it just consumes it a little bit even with the hits and, and the leakage that i had around the sides i still didn't really feel like i was going to have an issue with it so probably three or three and a half ounces would have been better in this i think i probably did two ounces when i filled it up uh, just as the regular kind of standard so interesting uh, side note Thanks everybody for joining me on the journey today. If you have a trail in Ontario you'd like to see highlighted on the channel, please comment below. And if you like this content, take a moment to like this content and maybe even subscribe. Remember, try to accomplish something new every time you ride and never let your fears set your limits.